Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is lesson 3.2 in our video series. Today we're gonna to be learning about how to calculate ranges and cooking equipment and how they fall into the whole house load calculation. We're gonna be in section 220.55. We're also gonna be in table 220.55. Let's get to it. When we get to table 220.55, we're going to read the black bold heading at the top of the table to make sure that we're in the right table. Then, starting on the left-hand side, we're going to find our number of ranges. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Then we're going to notice that there's three different columns. They're really in two different groups. It's column A and column B are grouped together under the demand factor in percentage column. And the reason that's so important for us to watch out is because column A and column B are multipliers. They're actual demand factors. But column C is a replacement value. And you'll understand more of what that means as we get farther through this video. Starting on the left-hand side in column A, this is when your individual range falls 3.4 or less KWs. In column B is when our ranges, the individual range itself, falls in between 3.5 and 8 and 3 quarter. Then, column C is when our ranges are 8.76 through 12 kW. Then, in the bottom left hand of the table, you're going to see some notes. And that's when we have a situation that doesn't fit into the normal table. And we're going to take it piece by piece. Let's get to it. How many VAs would you calculate for a 9 kW range in a single family dwelling? The first question we're going to ask is what column does our individual range fall in? Well, ours is a 9 kW, so it's going to fall into column C because it's greater than 8.76, but not over 12. And column C is a replacement value. Now let's find our total connected load. On the left-hand side, we're going to find our number of ranges. In this case, it's 1. Then we're going to cross all the way back over to column C and find that our replacement value is 8 kW. Then, just to stay in practice, I want you to always be familiar with checking for demand factors. But in this case, in table 220.55, column C is a replacement value. It is not a multiplier, so we're just going to select C. Great job. What is the total VA load you would calculate for three 3 kW ranges in a dwelling unit? First question we're going to ask is what column does our individual range fall in? Well, ours is going to fall into column A because the individual range is 3 kW. So we know that we're going to be doing a demand factor. Now we can start from the beginning. First, find our total connected load. We take our 3 multiplied by 3 kW, and that equals 9 kW. Now we check for demand factors. We're going to start on our left-hand side of the table. We're going to find our number of ranges. Then we're going to come over and we're going to find our demand factor. And we find that the demand factor for three ranges in column A is 70%. Now all we have to do is multiply. We take our 9 kW multiplied by our demand factor. That gives us our new reduced load, and we're going to select B. What is the total connected load you would calculate for two 3.2 kVA cooking appliances in a dwelling unit? First question we're going to ask is what column does our individual range fall in? Ours falls into column A. Now let's find our total connected load. We take and multiply it out, and we end up with 6.4. Now, let's check for demand factors. When we do that, we start on the left-hand side of our table. We come over and find our number of ranges, and then we cross over, and we find that for column A, two ranges is 75%. Now, all we have to do is multiply. We take our 6.4 multiplied by our demand factor, and this gives us our new reduced load, and we're going to select A. Great job. What is the total VA load you would calculate for one 7 kVA range in a dwelling unit? First off, let's find out what column we're using. Our individual range falls into column B. Now let's find our total connected load. Well, in this case, it's just one range, so the total connected load is 7. Now let's check for demand factors. When we head back to our table, we're going to start on the left-hand side and find our number of ranges. Then we're going to cross over and find our multiplier. And when we do that, we find that it's 80% for one range. Now, let's do the math. We take our 7 multiplied by our demand factor, 
and that gives us our new reduced load. And we select C. How many VAs would you calculate for a 14.6 KVA range in a dwelling unit? Step one, find out what column our individual range falls in. When we get to column C, we find out that it's only good through 12 kW. When it's over 12 kW, we have to use one of our table notes listed down below the table. In this case, we're going to be using note one. Note one says that when you have ranges that are 12 through 27 kVA, what we're going to do is increase that column C value by 5% for each kW that we are past 12. Now, that sounds really complicated, but I'm going to break it down piece by piece. Step one is find your total connected load. In this case, it told them to increase the column C value by 5%. So we start on the left-hand side and find our number of ranges, which is one. And then we cross over and find the column C value, which is 8 kVA. It wants us to increase that number by 5% for each kW we are past 12. Well, we're 14.6 past 12. And what the code states is that you're going to increase it for each kW past 12 or major fraction thereof. That's just a fancy way of saying if it's 0.50 or greater, you're going to round up. If it's 0.49 or less, you're going to round down. Well, in this case, we're 0.6, so we're going to round up to 15 kVA. So we are 15, and we need to find out how many we are past 12. Well, to do that, we can do some simple math. We have 15. We need to minus the 12 base, and we have 3 left over. Then we need to take that 3 and multiply it by 5% for each one which is a total of a 15% increase. We're going to take our original number from column C, and we're going to increase it by 15%, and that's going to give us 9.2 kW. The reason that I put the 1 in front of it is because that brought back the 8, and we increased the 8 by the 15%, and it gave us 9.2. And we're going to select A. Great job. What is the total VA load you would calculate for a 3 kVA cooktop and two 4 kVA wall-mounted ovens in a dwelling unit? First thing we're going to ask is what column do the individual ranges fall in? Well, in this case, we find that it falls into column A and B. This question is very simple. All you have to do is treat the column A ranges individually, the column B ranges individually, and then total them together. So what we do is we find our total connected load. The column A ranges is just 1, so it's 3 kVA. The column B ranges, we have to do some math, and we end up with 8 kVA. Now, we check for demand factors. We head back to our table, and we start on the left-hand side for our column A ranges, and we find the multiplier for 1, and then we start on the left-hand side and find our number of ranges for our column B ranges and find the multiplier, and we're going to find that they're 80 and 65% respectively. Now, all we have to do is do the math. We take our column A ranges and do the math, take our column B ranges and do the math, but then we can't forget to total them back together, and we're going to select A. Great job. 